Hey guys, welcome back. So this is a 2017 Sea-Doo Spark and also a 2007 Sea-Doo GTI SE155. Both these are four stroke skis. So I just picked these up off Facebook Marketplace. So you can see with this ski, it is missing the whole jet pump. It's in the ski, but it's broken. These things have been sitting for a very long time. The previous owner said that he believes this one is locked up. He did say these skis have pretty low hours, so we'll turn them on and get them checked out. Here is the other piece of the jet pump, and as you can see, the ears on it are all cracked and broken. So we'll remove the seat to this thing. You can tell it has been sitting for a long time. There's actually an ant nest in this whole entire ski. Let's see what's under this thing. Looks like we got a Nike hat, an old water bottle, and somebody's tampon. Nice. Looks like we got the key here. So unfortunately, I can't just lift the seat off this thing and look under it. You basically got to take this entire whole top of the machine off to get inside. It looks like somebody has already done that. He did give me the bolts to it. Here is fire extinguisher. Gas cap is loose. Nothing in there. So it looks like we've got a little step right here. And it looks like this is where you check the oil. See what that looks like. The oil looks decent. He did say that these did have pretty low hours on them. So I'm not sure how many years these things were sitting, but the guy said it was a pretty good while. And it looks like we have some trees growing in the seat here. All right, I'm gonna try out this Astro AI jump starter to see if we have any power to the ski or not. All right, don't hear any noises so far. All right, get this key installed. I hear a fuel pump and beeping. No way, that thing says 43 hours. There's no way. See that? That thing says 43 hours. There's no way. Just see what's... I really don't want to crank it. It has a lot of old fuel and I'm just not sure the condition of this engine. So before we start it up, let's get this thing all cleaned up and make sure everything's good and, and drain this fuel out of here. That thing says 43 hours. That is crazy for a 2007. I mean, I guess it's right. By the way, all the noise that you guys are hearing in the background is right here. They're clearing this land over here and building houses, unfortunately. I don't own this property here, so it looks like we're going to be having some neighbors next door. So in order to remove this to access the engine, battery, and everything else, this whole entire top black part has to come off. I think he removed all the screws, except pretty much, I noticed one right there. So let's see if we can pull this entire top off. I do believe 
And that comes off. Well, there's the steering steering cables already unhooked. So yeah, he's definitely been in here before. This is probably not the right way to do this. <laughs> So from first glances, it doesn't look that bad. It's like this is your steering cable actually, so. Oh wait, what is this? Uh-oh. Why is the starter out? We do have some water down in there. So this is a pretty cool engine though. A little three cylinder four stroke. I did hear that they have really bad issues with that spline shaft coming out of the crankshaft before the year's 2017. This is a 2017 model. I should have the uh, removable spline shaft there. So that's good. Take a look at this coolant, which is empty and there's a bug down in there. So that's not good. So the fuel down there doesn't look horrible, but it is kind of yellow looking. This thing looks like it was definitely left open. You can see that this plug was smushed in this material for a long time. There's some corrosion on here. Just little weeds and everything and thorns. So it looks like the top was off of this thing because all this is nasty. So he said this thing is possibly locked up and it looks like it was left like this. I can see in the hole there where it looks like there might be water coming out of it. So I'm just now noticing that all of these valve cover bolts are all loose and all of these spark plug bolts are loose as well so that's not a good sign now let's go ahead and get these spark plugs out i guess we'll take this valve cover off since everything's already kind of loose on here that one's tight Let's see all these are loose this hose clamp is loose as well It does look pretty clean down in there. Well, it does look pretty clean in there. These cams look like they have absolutely like no wear on them. Very low hours. This cam chain seems to be tight, looks good. Spark plugs are already loose. Should have known that. I'm glad I didn't try and start this thing. I guess all they would have done was spin that starter. Oh man, that is not good. I didn't want to see that. Oh. See what comes out of these cylinders. Oh yeah, those things got rust in them. I got a little camera. I'm gonna send it down here. See what these things look like. Oh yeah, those things look gross. These, these cylinders are pretty nasty.
inside that exhaust pipe. That doesn't look too good in there. Water is supposed to go around the outside to cool it, but it shouldn't be on the inside of it. Get this, get this thing soaking with some PB blaster. Let's undo this timing tensioner. All right, should be able to get these out now. Head removed. So this head doesn't look the best. There's a lot of rust on these valves. I might be able to clean those up. The rest of them look decent. I can probably work with those. However, these cylinders and pistons look absolutely horrible. That rust is pretty thick on there. So even if I did try and hone that out, there's gonna be a lot of pitting and that piston is just completely stuck. It looks like this piston actually moved a little bit at one point in time. You can actually kind of see a lip right there where the piston actually moved up, maybe about half an inch. But this one hasn't moved at all, so I'm wondering if we have a bent rod or something in here, because this piston is a lot lower than this one. So I'm thinking this thing might have hydro locked and bent a rod. All right, let's go ahead and start pulling this engine out of here.
Here's our throttle body. How you doing? Hey buddy. Hey guys, so I want to take a minute to say a few words from today's video sponsor, Factor. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to eat in just two minutes. Factor takes the stress out of meal planning, skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. You can now choose from a menu with over 35 options including keto, calorie smart, vegan, and more. Factor has so many options to keep my fridge well stocked, like juices and smoothies, and I can easily adjust my order size or even skip a week if I need to. Factor is a perfect solution when I'm busy working on projects at home or when I'm out on the run. So head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code HOMEPROS50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next month of orders. That's HOMEPROS50 at Factor75.com to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month of orders. So thank you Factor for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to work.
All right, here's a good look at our prop and our wear ring. It honestly doesn't look too, too bad. It's still got a pretty good seal on it. It is a little chewed up right here, but I'm seeing a lot worse than that. Looks like we are missing the drain plugs, so I'll have to pick some of those up. So now we have to remove this clamp here. There we go. And our drive shaft should pull out. There we go. There's our drive shaft end. Now we should be able to remove this engine. There's a lot of junk in there. There is our water pump right there. On the 2017 models should be able to remove this on the year models before that this spline is actually made onto the crankshaft so that's a big issue with the previous year models and these seals are actually pretty bad right there so looks like I need to replace those Lots of water in that oil. Some nasty stuff right there. Alright, so we got the engine pulled and you can see this thing has a lot of plastic gears in it. Looks like all the gears are plastic except for the starter and the flywheel. I believe this is based here oil sump right here it's a dry sump system so there's no oil pan this area holds your oil and it goes through these ports and it goes through your external water to oil cooler We 
Oh man, yeah, that looks absolutely disgusting. Here's our pickup filters, go right in here. I guess you could kind of call this your uh, oil pan, but it really doesn't hold a volume of oil. It's basically just a cover. But yeah, this is some nasty stuff in there. Definitely a bunch of water residue. And this stuff's like hardened on there. It's almost like flaking. Alright, there's the bottom of our crank pan. Look at them journals right there. They don't look too bad. I think it's just more like water residue on them. There's a little bit, but I don't see any major scoring or scratches. It just looks like regular wear. Alright, let's check these rods. I want to make sure we keep all these in order. These rod journals look excellent. I don't see any scoring or scratches. And the crank looks really good as well. So all these rod bearings look pretty good. They probably look scratched on camera, but they're actually really smooth. It's mainly the like satin finish that, that's just kind of wore off. But other than that, those look fine. But I also found what's really cool is these rod caps are actually broken. They're not cut, they have an exact fit. So this cap right here fits perfectly with no movement, but if you take it and put it over here on this rod, it doesn't fit. It doesn't lock in place like it does with the the rod here. The finish is, is all rough on, on the end there. You see these crank bearings look pretty good as well. There's just a little bit of discoloration, mainly on this one right here, but all that is pretty smooth. All right, I'm gonna hone these out a little bit before I try and send those pistons back through this way. our first piston it looks decent it just needs a lot of cleaning up until some of these rings are kind of stuck in there but I think we can get all this freed up and this was the worst one right here let's see if it comes out there we go this piston actually looks better than all the other ones, except for maybe the top. But this cylinder bore was definitely the worst.
All right, so I'm gonna try and hone these cylinders. They probably really need to be bored out, but I'm just gonna see what honing does. Maybe I can get by with doing that. as good as I'm gonna get it. All right, so I got these things cleaned up the best I could. They probably look worse on camera than they actually are. They are pretty stained and discolored, but I think these are gonna work. And I'm gonna go ahead and check the uh, ring gap on them. So I took one of the rings off the piston here. And we are gonna go ahead and check that to be sure. Actually, I'm gonna do it in the worst cylinder, which is this one. A general rule for piston ring gap is you want to have about three to four thousandths per inch of diameter. So for example, these cylinders are just a hair under three inches. So you would probably want anywhere from 11 to even like 15, 14, 15 uh, thousandths. I have it set at 10 thousandths and 13 thousandths. And ten thousandths does fit, but it's, it's kind of tight. And we'll go ahead and check thirteen thousandths here. Thirteen thousandths, it goes about halfway, but then it stops. And it won't go on fourteen thousandths at all. I was going to go ahead and buy new piston rings for this, but I honestly don't even think I need to. Mm -hmm. You can tell this engine had really low hours on it because there's like no skirt wear at all. Usually you would have like lines and scratches going down and there is like none. I got these pistons cleaned up. However, these rings are completely stuck on here and I can't get them freed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on the wire wheel, see if I can get the rest of that cleaned up and get those rings unstuck. <laughs> See if we can get these rings unstuck. Don't want to get those rings too hot. You'll uh, ruin the hardness on them. You can barely see 
the gap on the ring right there. Alright, so I cannot get these rings unstuck, so I'm going to try heating it up in some hydraulic oil, see if that will work. That seemed to work. Yep. Right, I can just get it out the rest of the way without breaking it. All right, finally. You can see all the rust that was in there holding that. Hey guys. Hey guys. What are you doing? Hey, Kiki. You guys best friends? <laughs> All right, we got everything cleaned up. I guess we can go ahead and start putting this engine back together. So I was going to replace these rod bearings, but there's like virtually no wear on them. I mean, they're very smooth. The um, satin finish is kind of wore off. But there's like no scratches. I'm just going to reuse them. Okay, so this piston has an arrow on it and that points towards the exhaust. You also want to make sure your ring gap is about 120 degrees apart. assembly loop here. You also don't want to forget your thrust bearings. These keep the crankshaft from moving side to side.
Got some Loctite 515 here. This stuff works great on uh, machine surfaces that don't have a gasket. Got this crankshaft sensor. Got a brand new oil filter. I will, uh, before I start this engine, I'll take this back out and I'll fill this with oil. So this is our PTO cover. Our seal is pretty bad in there. It's got a lot of cracks in it. And this is a very common issue for these to leak and it will get uh, lake water inside your engine. It will also rust the PTO shaft. So it's um, very good to go ahead and replace these seals. Beefy old snapping right there. And one. We got another snap ring in there. And 
no spacer. So I actually was able to just push those in with my fingers. There's one. Now we have a spacer. And then we got our second one. It's also a good idea to fill that void with some grease. And that will keep that seal from dry rotting. Only lake water is going to be touching that. And you can see on this old one how dry and cracked that one is. Take my other seal here. There we go. I'll take some grease and I'm just gonna fill those seals. It's better to use marine grease on this, but right now I do not have any. Alright, so I got the cylinder head fairly cleaned up, however it looks like we have some leaking on the valves and also this valve right here is stuck. I probably could free that up, but with all the buildup and rust around these, I want to go ahead and just lap these valves. So, let's see, I think that's that one. Let's see if we can just kind of free it up a little bit. did free up. Figured it would. But I still want to go ahead and lap these in. Alright, so I made a little valve tool here. Our belt number two. You can see those ports were really nasty, so those definitely need to be cleaned up. Head gasket installed. Before we set the head on, we want to make sure that the middle piston is on top dead center. And there's actually a port right here that you stick a tool in and there's a groove on the crankshaft that locks the middle piston in top dead center. You can stick a light in here and you can see that groove. You want it lined directly up 
you can stick an allen wrench in there but you want to make sure that it's perfectly lined up on the middle cylinder or the number two cylinder on top dead center all right so i got all new head bolts you do not want to reuse the old head bolts these are torque to yield bolts are basically a stretch bolt they are a one-time use and that is it if you reuse them you won't get the proper torque so be sure to buy new ones So we are going to set our torque wrench uh, to 15 foot-pounds, then 30 foot-pounds, and then 120 degrees, and then 90 degrees after that. First torque is 15 foot-pounds. Alright, I'm going to set this to 30 foot-pounds now. Next, we're gonna go ahead and get our cam tray on. Don't forget your seals. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and get the cams installed. You can see they say intake and exhaust. You also wanna make sure that these are faced up. The one that's without the rubber grommet on the end, you want on your intake side. Now we have our exhaust, which has our rubber piece at the end have these lined straight up so now you want these two marks lined perfectly together then get your chain around it and your timing will be set all right I got everything lined up both of my marks are in the same plane so this is a cam chain tensioner there's a little tiny ball bearing in there and if you press that it will release the pressure so you can reuse it and uh, you just slide it in here in your spring and you can tighten it back up and once the engine's running oil will fill that ball bearing back up and it will apply the correct tension so right now you want to make sure that your lines are lined up your tensioner is in and your crankshaft locking mark is in the right position in this hole if you get all that you're lined up right there's actually a tool that goes on top of these camshafts up here and it locks them in place in the correct position that makes it a lot easier but i don't have one of those tools all right i'm going to go ahead and torque these to 80 inch pounds got some liquid molly I'm just gonna go ahead and pour a little bit of oil just kind of over this engine here I'm also gonna put some in the oil filter housing All right, now I'm just gonna spin the engine over a few times and just double check my marks and my crankshaft position. And our crankshaft is lined up, so we're good to go. Let's 
go ahead and get this starter installed. I'm gonna go ahead and test the compression on this engine before I install it in the machine. So I just got us a temporary wire hooked up to the starter right now. All right, let's go ahead and spin this thing over. Seems to be turning over good. Let's start the cylinder first. All right, here goes nothing. Wow. That's at like 200 PSI. That is excellent. Check cylinder number two. Hey guys, a good tip. So these compression tester fitting ends don't get stuck down in there like what just happened to me. Take some electrical tape and wrap it around it. That way you can still get it out without it unthreading and getting stuck down in there. I had to file down a socket really thin in order to fit down in there and pull this plug out that just got stuck. So let's move on to cylinder number two. Same thing. 200. Perfect. <laughs> 200. Perfect. All of them have 200, which is awesome. Right, got some new spark plugs. Alright guys, well I got this thing all put back together and I do believe it is ready to be put back in the machine. However, that is going to be in part two as there is still a whole lot to do. We still have to get all this cleaned up, which in order to do that we're going to have to pull all this out. We have to get all these wires hooked up and all this water cleaned out of here to where we can pressure wash and clean everything. So this body has also been sitting out here, so we got to get all this cleaned up. And we still have this whole other ski to work on. And as you can see, it has been breeding mosquitoes here, sitting and waiting on its turn to get put back together. We still got to install a new pump here. There was ants living in this machine, so we'll have to get all that cleaned out of there. But all that is going to be in the next video. So until then, I always appreciate you guys hanging out and working on these two jet skis or personal watercrafts, whatever you want to call them. And I will see you in the next video. So y'all take care. Later.